Welcome to Bulldog Breakdown. I'm Alec Nolan. We're flying solo on this Father's Day. Just two days ago, a shakeup in the Mountain West. San Diego State giving written notice this week that the school intends to resign from the conference. In a letter, the school asked the Mountain West for a, quote, one-month extension given unforeseen delays involving other collegiate athletic conferences beyond our control, end quote. As of now, the school does not appear to have a Power 5 invite. SDSU would need to give a year of notice to withdraw next June. If it waits past June 30th, the exit fee jumps from 16.5 million to 34. SDSU has long been linked to the Pac-12, which is in the midst of landing a television contract. Just an hour before this news broke, we talked to Fresno State's president about the Bulldogs' Elevate campaign. All right, we welcome in the president of Fresno State, Dr. Saul Jimenez Sandoval. Doctor, how is morale going? How are things at the university? It's great. We're building and uh, we are in the summer no months right now welcoming new students into the campus, which is great, great energy. One of the main reasons we wanted to bring you in here, obviously, is the Elevate campaign, right. which you guys came out with recently. For someone who doesn't know what that is, how would you describe it? So Elevate campaign is a campaign that visualizes what the future is going to be like at Fresno State, specifically the future with our facilities, with our students, and with our fan engagement as well. So it elevates us to the next level where we say to ourselves, we are a mature region that showcases the best of Central California to the world. How long did you guys formulate this plan? I mean, how long was it in the works until you finally came out with the news? It's been in the works for quite a while, actually. Uh, it's been in the works for, for years. Um, so before, you know, pre previous president, Dr. Castro, was working on this. I came on board, of course, and I worked on it pretty hard uh, with Terry Toomey. What was the general reception when you guys came out with it? You know, the general reception has been very good. It's been, um, it's been very um, comforting to see how the public sees themselves in this Elevate campaign and how we can visualize what the future is going to be like for the region. So very, very good reception. And then when it comes to this plan, I know a lot of it had to do with obviously the, the failure of Measure E, the sales tax that was introduced to try and fund a lot of this. So when that didn't go through, did that escalate this plan even more or change it in any way? Or were you guys going to do this no matter what? So we were going to do this no matter what, because I believe that the region deserves, we are worthy of facilities of this caliber. We are worthy of facilities of this incredible level of engagement with the fans and also with our students. So we were going to do it anyway. Why do you think Measure E failed? I don't think it failed. To be honest with you, I think a 48% support for Fresno State is tremendous. I think Measure E uh, educated a large population. I think a lot of people think that Fresno State is either just on the wall, you know, it's a wallpaper, or it's just there all the time. We take it for granted most of the time, and I say that as somebody who grew up in Fowler. Um, and I think this 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 campaign which was not led by Fresno State, and it was not endorsed by Fresno State because I cannot endorse it because I'm a state employee, right. um, really educated the public as to the value, the worth of Fresno State. Um, every single facet of Valley Life is permeated by Fresno State. So 48% of the voters said yes. Uh, in my mind, that's 48% of people who appreciate the power that Fresno State brings to the vitality of this region. And I know you guys have come out with, you know, the, the plan of Elevate and saying a lot of this will have to do with private funding. So how much of the $250 million proposed do you think needs to come from that source? I th I'm not sure, you know, that I can talk to you about specifics right now with percentages, but I will say to you that there is a funding formula within all of the betterments that we have with Elevate that will also have a pretty significant return on our investment. Mm -hmm. So it is not just that we invest in the facility and then that's the end of that. No, we invest and in doing so, we also generate a pretty significant amount of funding for Fresno State. So that's a big proportion of this uh, vision that we're putting forth. The other part, of course, is private funding. Mm -hmm. It is going to be fundraising. Um, so we will, we will have to figure that out, you know, in the coming years. When people look at, okay, how do we get there? Is there a timeline in your guys' mind of, hey, we need to get that by this date or this year? Has that been discussed? We have tiers. Okay. So it is not we're going to do this, you know, in one single <laughs> swoop. And it would be nice, though. That's the end of that, right? <laughs> it would be nice, you know, in two years, everything's going to be done, right? With 
with all of our 18 uh, programs as well, right? Because it's, it's 18 sports that we're speaking about here. It's not just football. It is everything. It is women's and men's uh, sports that we're speaking about. 12 women's and six men's. What is that timeline? The timeline is we begin with the suites. The suites are going to be this year. We will see a significant uh, renovation in the suites. After that, we go to the nor north end. The north end then provides a significant amount of funding for us when it's finished. Uh, after that, it's the restrooms. And then after that, you know, the rest of it comes through. Perfect world. With this timeline, what's a year that makes sense to you to say, hey, we, this is a good goal to have? A year that makes sense to me would be 2026, mm. to really have everything in place. All of our people know exactly what to do. We have a time frame for it. We have a blueprint for what the stadium looks like. We have a blueprint for baseball, a blueprint for equestrian, which is a magnificent vision for that as well, a blueprint for soccer, women's soccer, which includes also track and field. Aquatics, you know, everything will be fully comprehensive. And this is not just important for Fresno State, it's important for the region. Mm -hmm. Because mind you, every time that we say Fresno State, it's synonymous with the Fresno region, the greater valley is being represented. That's why this is so important. It's about branding, it's about marketing ourselves, it's about exporting to the rest of the world our values and who we are as a people right here in the San Joaquin Valley. And I also know a lot of this has been happening amid sort of this conference realignment talk. And, sure. and there has been a major push. Sure. At first, people talked about the Pac-12. Now it seems like the Big 12 is, is really the push. And even the Fresno mayor, Jerry Dyer, sure. you know, pushing for this as well. Does the Big 12 make sense for you guys? And is it sort of boom or bust uh, if you don't get into that conference? It's not boom or bust. I think what we need to keep in, uh, in mind is the following. A conference realignment at this point is good for Fresno State because we will be showcased on a national level in a pretty profound way. That's why it makes sense. And it makes sense because, for the most part, we are overlooked in the grander scheme of what California is all about. And this would give us a center stage to really say to the rest of the world, this is who we are, we are proud of who we are, and this is what we're sharing with you to the rest of the world. We produce 25% of our nation's food right here in this region. This needs to be a center focal point of the nation saying to us, thank you for the great food that we have to eat tonight on this dinner table. That's very true. I also wanted to know if it does not happen, you know, let's say that the conference realignment doesn't work, it, what happens then? We keep doing what we are doing as we keep going along. We deserve this. We are worthy of this Elevate campaign. Now, I didn't go to Fresno State, but I am from the area, and I know a lot of people that went there as well. Do you believe the alumni here, so far, have done enough to help push this? And do you think that the professional athletes that used to go to Fresno State are essentially doing enough to try and get us to this point? So let me take it into two areas right. here, right? You did not come to Fresno State, however, we, Fresno State, welcome you, and we, Fresno State, create an ecosystem in which you thrive. Okay. Within one or two degrees, and I bet you it's one degree, you will meet another bulldog that is making your life better, that is raising your quality of life here in the Valley. So that's one part. So you are invested just as much as the alumni in making Fresno State succeed in the future because you want the region to succeed. If Fresno State succeeds, the region will succeed as well. So that's one part, right? The other part is we all need to be focused on the success of Fresno State. Alumni absolutely need to be energized about this. Our athletes, incredible, powerful athletes out there who represent the best of Fresno State, absolutely they need to come on board as well. You, a non, you know, alumna, alumnus of Fresno State, absolutely come on board as well, right? <laughs> right. Because at the end of the day, it's not about Fresno State, it's about the region. Mm. And this is really what my vision is all about. It's not that Fresno State is going to succeed, it's that for the region as a whole, we are collectively going to succeed together. Well, we certainly will be following this as it continues, and we want to thank you for your time. Thank we you. always appreciate it. Thank you. He's Dr. Sol Jimenez Sandoval. So the clock is ticking to get $250 million, and the clock is also back on for Measure E. Sports Director Stephen Hicks 
sits down with Mayor Dyer's former chief of staff, getting an inside look at Measure E 2.0. Plus, same court, new look. We go behind the scenes with Fresno State's new women's volleyball coach and why mindset is everything for the Bulldogs.